Hello everybody, Brad here today and welcome back to Planet Zoo. So in this episode it is going to be a very large time lapse. So this goes to around 27 minutes and this is because I worked on getting in our Western Lowland Gorillas. So at the end of the time lapse we have a little tour of the zoo because things have moved around a lot. So as you can see there, we now have the red ruffed lemurs very close to our warthogs and what we're going to do is separate our exhibits into areas by continent so for example now we're going to have the warthogs the red ruffed lemurs and the western western lowland gorillas in the african section of our park so i wanted this exhibit to be quite a like a in your face exhibit you know quite not very low key shall we say so what I envisioned is having this kind of a chasm and in this chasm with kind of mountainous areas going around the side I want it to be very jungly, lots of trees everywhere, lots of rocks and we actually get in a temple. So I found a temple from the steam workshop and we get that in and that's a really nice centerpiece and it also acts very nicely as somewhere for the gorillas to sleep at night. So I'm just sorting out the research here. I obviously wanted to start researching the Africa theme and we get a food court down the bottom of the exhibit with a nice viewing area where the guests are kind of relax, chill out, look at the gorillas from quite a wide variety of viewpoints. Now I always struggle doing raised paths going up onto a plateau. They're quite difficult to look right and I had to spend a long time kind of shaping it, smoothing it out and then just getting lots and lots of rocks and foliage in. And lots of guests actually go up onto this viewing platform. So lots and lots of guests are coming up here now. They're having a great look at our gorillas. Up here I also built a new kind of modern food court and that will also be shown in the time lapse later. But I really want to get in our Western Lowland Gorillas. They are critically endangered in the wild. There are not many left at all. I think it was, I'll come out a number, but it's not very many. Um, but it's interesting to see the kind of impact that the zoos are having on these gorillas. Because if you go to a zoo and you see a gorilla, apparently it is most definitely a Western Lowland Gorilla. And these are kind of indigenous to the Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, Angola. So it's all in that sort of western side of Africa. And I wanted to get in a nice difference between standard African exhibits that are kind of very grasslandy, quite deserty in a way. And I wanted this to be a real focal point to say, look, Africa is this amazing continent that contains so many different types of animals. This is going to be the more tropical, not rainforest, but you know, much more just tropical, a bit more green side of that African theme. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. The kind of terrain took a long time to get right, just because I think it's really difficult to get terrain right without having to use lots of other bits like rocks and trees so I kind of in the end what I done is I said look this is going to be the terrain then I went away and I done lots of rock forming um, foliage all of that kind of jazz so here we're going to start on the rock so this is going to be a cliff face where I actually built a waterfall so I thought what I could do is I could do the terrain painting and just just paint it rock but that doesn't really stand out you know it's very 2d so what I've done is I've put that on, but to make it 3D, I've got all of these rocks in lots of different shapes and sizes, sort of twisted around, rotated, just to make it look a bit more 3D, make it pop a little bit more. And in the end, it actually does look quite nice with the waterfall. And if you want to do something similar in your game, I really advise you to just take lots of different rocks, just settle on a biome, and then just pick all different rocks in any order you want. Just twist them around using the Z key on your keyboard. Just twist them around, rotate them, move them up and down. And it will give a very nice kind of theme of this 3D cliff face. So I was pretty happy with this. Um, the path behind that rock face, we also put lots of donation boxes, TV screens, all that kind of stuff there as well. So guests can kind of stand behind the waterfall and look down into the exhibit. So here we kind of just get out a little bit of water in the exhibit. I'm toying with the idea of changing this up a little bit 
The waterfall I was kind of happy with, it's a very basic waterfall, like there's nothing special about it at all, it's just a very very basic waterfall. But you know what, I'm actually pretty happy with it, so in the end it looks quite nice, it's quite a nice extra feature point of the exhibit and it gives the gorillas a little bit of room to if they want to have a bit of a splash and have a little bit of a drink from this pool then they can do and it looks pretty good you know from standing up there on the path looking down if you're a guest it does look quite cool so i was pretty happy with it in the end and i started with building like a little cave for the gorillas for like a hard shelter so just using rocks um as you can see here i, I kind of you know start planning it out and think about how it's going to look and i kind of delete all that in the end and then we put in that temple that's available on the workshop so i'll link the temple down below in this video description so if you want to check out the temple you can it looks pretty cool i was really happy with it so i put lots of bedding inside so the girls could go for a little bit of a snooze in there but here i'm just carrying on with the rock face and making sure that looks nice it's all about using different rocks different sizes different shapes and it actually looks pretty good so here i start building the cave this is a bit of a um it's interesting to see but I don't keep it this does go away for the temple in the end can you let me know in the comments down below what you think of time lapses um, do you like the way this series is going are you enjoying the time lapses would you rather to see everything that I do and have much longer episodes where you see every single bit of the kind of decision process and building process let me know down below guys what you think um, so to carry on here we do paint the terrain as a rock behind that cliff face there just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So we get in the two gorillas so there's one female and one male and they actually do have a baby in the end which is quite cute. So here we're just putting a few rocks out into the actual exhibit just to give a little bit of depth to the exhibit itself again and we paint a little bit of it as a rock. Now they could basically escape from any way they wanted to really so here we're just spending a little bit of time to making sure they actually can't escape which is probably preferable because you probably do not want a massive western lowland gorilla charging around your zoo your guests would probably not thank you for that so here we're just blocking that up just by putting rocks in just making sure they're obviously below the path you don't want to create any trip hazards and then that creates an exhibit where they cannot escape from so obviously we've got the kind of river running through the exhibit so here we're just popping in some rocks so the gorillas can actually go over to the other side and a great way to check this is just by using the transversible terrain view and just making sure that they can cross that by it being blue and not white so here we're painting the terrain so that's lots and lots of soil bit of soil bit of rock just to change it up and here we're just finishing that cliff face between the cave that they were going to sleep in to kind of the waterfall cliff face there so now we need to think about donation boxes and obviously these exhibits need to create money at the end of the day right so we need to put these donation boxes basically everywhere where we think the guests are going to stand and view our animals so again we have to put in some tv screens explaining what is in the exhibit and putting down some educational speakers because that's i mean to me zoos are about education and trying to educate people and i think that's the reason why a lot of these animals are now endangered because people are just not educated on how to live with them how to kind of you know coexist with these animals so that's something that I really want to focus on this in this zoo is lots of educational speakers, lots of TV screens, lots of those conservation billboards which are really interesting and give guests lots of facts about how they can help these animals. So now we need to think about our animals' happiness and what they want to do while they're with us in our zoo. So we put out a few climbing structures, um, that's a keeper hut there obviously to make sure that these guys are fed, watered and cleaned. So foliage, we've gone for Africa Tropical. That's the kind of biome that the gorillas like. So we're using lots of like the custard apple trees there in the corner, lots of these mangrove trees, Himalayan birch trees, ferns, everything like that just to make it look really interesting and hopefully realistic. The tamarind trees are great because they add a little bit of color of those oranges on them. And then obviously we've put in a few palms here and there. And the ferns are really good. They're really cool if you if you move the ferns down so you actually hide the trunk they look really really cool so again just adding a few more rocks in trying to make it look realistic and interesting at the same time um, so i think the grizz were pretty happy with this there were a few plants they weren't too keen on but in the end that was pretty good so 
that's basically most of the enclosure. Now we're changing this front bit to be one-way glass. So guests can look in, but the gorillas hopefully will not get too stressed out with guests looking in at them. So again, we're putting in educational speakers, TV screens to make sure that these lovely gorillas can be you know, learned about um, and hopefully give our guests a little bit more information. So we did just put the keeper hut down there. We just add that little path in to connect it up with the warthog kind of area and the staff building close to there. We do actually build a little food court in this area. So here I'm just speeding up the time, trying to get some research done for the Africa theme. And then I think we pop in a um, power source, so a transformer, to make sure that all those TV screens, educational speakers, everything like that can all be powered. And um, hopefully the water will be filtered via our water treatment plant. So I've enclosed it in this kind of African looking building just to make sure that our guests don't really notice it, you know, kind of, it just kind of just fades into the background, which is kind of the idea. So in there, there is the power source and the water treatment. So the guests are pretty happy with the zoo at the moment, I think. Um, the flamingos is an interesting exhibit. They were complaining that they didn't have enough hard shelters, so I'll just add another one of those kind of wood lean-to shelters. I'm actually really happy with the flamingo exhibit. I really like it. I think it's quite an interesting idea. It's quite an interesting entrance to that reptile house. And now we start thinking about the food court down the bottom of the gorilla exhibit. So I want to get something in very themed towards Africa and give our guests a really nice area where they can chill out, have a pretty great view of the gorillas and have something to eat or drink at the same time. So very Africa themed, got lots of Africa benches, Africa huts lots of the African decorative pieces going on here and then we kind of paint most of the terrain around here in sand, sand and rock, put out a few these little trees and um, can the candelabras look awesome and elephant grass, oh my god I love elephant grass, it's so cool. Anyway so here we're using lots of bits from the African kind of just construction tab. Africa's probably the easiest one to decorate with because there's just so many pieces um, so I'm kind of just having lots of fun here, exploring with lots of pieces, making an area, hopefully, where guests really like to come and chill out. So the paths here were getting a little bit strange, so I did just have to kind of demolish most of them and kind of just start again for this little staff area. I love this game with an absolute passion, but my god, the paths. The paths do not make it easy at all, it takes quite a while to get used to them, but once you're used to them, you know, then you're probably fine. So kind of just putting lots more elephant grass, lots of foliage in this area, trying to make it look as kind of African as possible. So here as well, just putting down a bit more sand, making sure that this area looks pretty cool. And you can come sort of just come down here, chill out, and have a quite a nice time. So here we're putting some rocks just to cover up these terrain areas that you can't really get away with. Um, so kind of just trying to hide them as best as possible whilst making the area look quite nice and putting in lots of rock and foliage again. And these little Ford food court areas I really like because it really breaks up the building of exhibits, building the paths and the food courts, they just make the area look nice, you know, it just makes it look nice. Uh, I have to remember to keep putting in bins, I need to remember that for the future, keep putting in bins, 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 bins. And I'll probably need to get a bit better at the work zones because that's a really, really handy tool to use. So I should probably use it a little bit more in the future. Um, but because we've done the whole zoo rejig, which you will see later on, I'll give you a bit of a tour of the zoo later on, just so you can see all of the sort of bits that we've changed. I think work zones are even more important just to make sure that we have keepers, vets, mechanics, handymen, you know, janitors, all of it, all in um, these areas. So here there's a little bit of like a null area, like there's just nothing going on. So we just put a few bits in these areas just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then the rain starts to pour. Not much surprise there, hey? So I wanted to put this like little fence in. It was annoying me because every time I was duplicating this fence, it was going down and sinking into the ground. So that, that was annoying, but I kind of sorted it out in the end and it gives quite a nice kind of border um, to kind of stand back and you know view these animals but don't get too close because you'd not want to tickle a gorilla I imagine. So we just sort that out 
make sure it's nice and sunk and it gives just quite a nice border to that little exhibit area there and then additionally we put in some conservation balls just to give the guests a little bit more information and education around conservation of these animals and what we can do to hopefully um, stop them being so endangered and hopefully improving it for the future so because this is the African area, I wanted to make a kind of sign, something obvious to say, yep, you're now going into the African area just to aid with traveling around the zoo and making sure it's as easy for guests as possible. So we do a very, very simple sign here just to say Africa with a few of the kind of animal stickers, signs, I don't know really what you'd call them um, on here, just to make sure that it all looks good. This took me so long to find the R like the standard the small R because like large letters and the smaller letters it's taken me so long to find the R I actually thought I was going a little bit blind but anyway we do it in the end even though it takes ages to find all these letters and we kind of just put a few decorative things on here just to make it look interesting and we'll do the same for the Asia area a little bit later on and we'll be doing these for every single area of our park so we chuck a few signs on like the gorilla I think it's like a gorilla giraffe and a lemur which we put on here just to make it look a little bit interesting and then we start to color the letters on the sign as well and i'll try and keep these kind of things being done off camera but in time lapse and like i said earlier if you have any preference of what you want to see in the future like if you really hate time lapses and you do not want to see them let me know down below you know i want to make some of you guys enjoy watching and i enjoy recording so if you don't enjoy seeing these time lapses just let me know and we can have extra long episodes or live streams or you know we can think of something so here i'll just put in a little bit more sand around this red rough lemur exhibit just to make it obvious that this is still in the africa area but i'm really happy with how this is going i like i said there's so many decorative pieces you can make it look so interesting and kind of african themed so i'm really really enjoying myself at the moment in this zoo here we try and make some kind of custom um, tv screens for the exhibit by using again more of the african themed items using like logs lots of these like um, log billboards which are really cool and they can make these tv screens just stand out a little bit more so it's just not so generic um, I really like these and I encourage you to do something similar in your own zoos because it's actually quite surprising how much of a difference this can make just to make it look a little bit more interesting, a little bit nicer. So we pop those out all across um, this gorilla exhibit just to make it look a little bit nicer and also keep this education going because that's something that we really value here in our zoo. And now we work on a little food court area up here just to make sure there are loads of toilets drink shops food shops everywhere to make sure that our guests are as happy as possible so it's like a little plaza we have i think it's a chief beef a gulpy slush in the end and a toilets around here and we also pop in a transformer and a small staff room up here just to also keep our staff happy so i thought it'd be a really nice little addition to this area of the zoo it means that we can then hopefully have another little viewing area to an exhibit that goes adjacent to the gorillas around the kind of terrain modification that we've done so i'll explain that a little bit later anyway here i want to do something a little bit more modern um so kind of detaching ourselves from that african theme not because this is not going to be an african area but you know if you go around the zoo especially in the ones in the uk you have some areas which are themed so it might be african themed or asian themed or european themed but then again, you will have areas which are just very generic. So I wanted to do somewhere that's generic. So here we pop in a transformer. This does change. We make this kind of courtyard area out the back a lot larger for the staff room. Um, but we do like a little courtyard area. If we have any staff here that smoke, they can come out here to, to have a cigarette and just chill out between shifts. So again, this is just why I love these games so much. Planet Coaster, Planet Zoo. There's so many items. You can literally just spend hours and hours with these tiny little items like air conditioning unit, light switches, doors, windows. There's just no other game to me that's quite like it. And it's just, it's so fun to play. So I love these little decorative bits. I love filling these little green gaps of just foliage and color and rock. And they, you know, they look so cool. So here we just put out a little bit more foliage. We do like a little pond so people can come up here, have a little picnic, have a nice lunch by a pond. 
that's the new well toilet. I thought that looked quite nice, quite generic, quite standard. Um, I try and put a little kind of area in so they can actually sit like over the lake, like a little raised area, but it doesn't work. So I kind of just give up the idea. Putting a few benches, putting a few bins, just make it a really nice area for people to come and relax in between watching our lovely animals. So here this is the staff room going in, so making sure there's a staff room available for our staff. And it means that the staff haven't got to walk all the way back down to the kind of main part of the zoo to have a break. And it, that could mean that the shops up here have a long period of time with no staff. So I thought if we put a little staff room here, we'll make sure it's kind of like neatly covered up and it looks nice. And I think I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's good enough that guests on, um, you know, if you really looked, you'd be able to notice the staff rooms and the power stations. But I hope that I've done it in such a way to make these areas a little bit more inconspicuous. So here again, we're just trying to fill in those, those green gaps with some foliage and make it a little bit more colourful and very nice to come here and chill out for a little bit. So this little pond, we put in some reeds, we put in some rocks, put in a, you know, a few bits of sort of shrubs and trees around it just to make it look quite nice. Um, it didn't stop snowing for a while. I actually thought some of my animals were going to die because it's snowing for so long. So I was really worried about a few of them, but I think they'll be okay. So again, like love the lights, putting a few lights out just to make sure that at night guests and staff can also see where they're going. So here we change the loony balloons to gulpy slush. That's a new shop that I researched. Um, and it makes it look a little bit nicer. So because the shops made the paths go a little bit weird, I redone all the paths, redone this kind of um, grid section of the path and make it all work a little bit nicer. So I'm really happy with this. Again, just filling out a little bit of these green gaps, making sure all of these paths are level. Um, and very shortly, we'll be jumping into the game to have a tour of the zoo. I'll let you know what's changed because we've moved a few exhibits around and changed it a little bit. But I hope you enjoy the new layout of our zoo and I hope you enjoy the series so far, guys. So the building is done. So this is our new African area. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you all of the changes that I've made in between last episode and this one. So as you remember, we had the lemurs and the red pandas over here. The red pandas are actually here. The lemurs were here. And then we had this kind of restaurant build. All those steps are funking out. We had this restaurant building over here. And what we've done is kind of moved it all to make a little bit more sense, be a little bit more compact and just make the layout a little bit more realistic. So this is now the restaurant. It is the exact building that was over there. It's just we've obviously got a slightly different path layout. There's this little bit down here where you can come and have your lunch by the pond if you want to. And in the back of that, you still got the staff area. Here, we now have lots of baby tortoises. Look how cute they are. So these are, are the Aldabra giant tortoises. That's awesome. Look at look how cute they are. Probably need to really summer those to the wild because that's getting quite full in there. But guests can enter this habitat so they can walk through here and they can have a look at all of our lovely little tortoises. So the warthogs have stayed where they are. So this is now where the, was it the is it this the red ruffed lemurs? Oh, look how cute they are. So they now live here because obviously they are uh, an animal that are native to Africa. So we've now got this Africa area. I made this sign myself. I was actually quite happy with that. So you've got the warthogs, you've got the red rough lemurs, you can come down here into this. This is probably going to be the most, I would say this is probably going to be the most crazy exhibit we do. I would imagine anyway, because if you went to a zoo, and obviously this is going to be a semi-realistic series, you probably wouldn't see an exhibit like this. You might do actually, but maybe not the temple, but I thought the temple looked cool. That was something that I got from the Steam Workshop. And it came into to kind of like lion, oh, he's going for a jump, lion dragon thing. So I sort of put one into the rock there to kind of look like that was buried into the rock a long time ago. But these are our Western lowland gorillas. They look absolutely beautiful. But I'm pretty happy with this area. The sun's about to set, so I'm just going to pause the game. Pretty happy with this. Um, we've got this lovely little food court down here where people can come and grab a bite to eat. 
got a few like um, keeper hut, staff rooms, I think that's a power station in there. So I'm pretty happy with that area. What we do need to do is probably funk up this area a little bit more. I wanted to get that real African jungle vibe in because um, obviously these are animals which are native to Africa and obviously the Western Lowland Gorillas are native to areas that have quite dense jungle. Um, so I want to get all these kind of trees in there. Maybe get a few shops and stuff up here. Not sure because this is just a bit of wide blank space that I'm not doing a lot with. I was pretty happy with this, our little gorilla area here. But again, we probably need to start thinking about more animals out this way. So start using this area. This kind of plateau where the ground goes up will probably extend that to come down here. And then what we we're working on in the later stage of the time lapse was this area over here, this little food court area. Again, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, looks pretty cool. Happy with like a little pond and I think that's quite nice. And then this is where we're going to be building our next exhibit. I don't know what we're going to have. It'll be an African animal, I imagine, because that is the Asia area there. So that'll probably be the border between the Asian and the African area. So we'll probably want an exhibit like here, like a nice kind of quarter circle exhibit. Not sure what we're getting, gonna get in there yet, but maybe another type of monkey so we can get lots of trees with the monkey swinging between them. I'd like to get another viewing platform maybe here. And then, like I said, this area will be utilized for brand new exhibits. I'd love to get the safari in at some point with the like you know elephants giraffes wildebeest zebras all that kind of jazz so i really hope you enjoyed the episode today i apologize that it was time lapse heavy um but i just thought it was necessary to get this exhibit um done so i really hope you enjoyed it guys i'll see you again very shortly in our next episode have a great day and i'll see you later thank you very much for watching the video guys i really hope you enjoyed it please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel down below if you haven't done so already and please feel free to follow me on facebook twitter and instagram have a great day see you later